Good day. Welcome to Hutch's Hangout, where we'll talk about books, writing, and kind of whatever strikes my fancy. National Cartoonist Day is coming up, so I thought I'd show my comics collection just because why not? First up is Being a Dog is a Full Time Job by Charles. It's Peanuts. You know, you know Peanuts. They were doing a charity sale, I thought I'd pick it up because I grew up on Peanuts. I love Peanuts. Peanuts was a big influence on me as a kid, so I thought, you know, this should be part of my collection. Next up is Happily Ever After by Chaz Adams, who basically he's the guy that's responsible for the Adams family. He does a lot of <laughs> dark humor comics, uh, and this is just a nice little collection of them. To give you just a few examples, it's this one. First a drink, Margaret, then we'll talk. George, George, drop the keys. They don't come crawling back asking me to forgive you. And then of course for the flip side, a woman rigging a bomb in her husband's lunchbox. But it's a fun little collection. There are a few strips in here that include members of the Adams Family, but mostly they're just funny one-shot comics, and I'm pretty sure that's even how the Adams Family developed, is he just did strips over time, and there started being a little bit of commonality amongst some of the characters uh, eventually, but they're really great, so you might want to pick it up if you get a chance. Next up is The World of Chaz Adams, which is just a larger collection of some of his comics. Um, it does include some of his, I guess you could say, less culturally sensitive comics, uh, so if that's something that is really going to put you off, <laughs> maybe don't pick it up. I think the print quality is pretty good in this book. There's another example, just caption if you can't see on there is, for heaven's sake, can't you do anything right? Here's the back, and it's just really nice book to add to your collection if that's the sort of thing you're into. Next up is Masterful Marks, Cartoonist Who Changed the World, uh, 16 graphic biographies. Basically it's a collection of biographies of cartoonists drawn as cartoons not necessarily by the person. Not They're not autobiographical, I don't think. But it's different. Artwork. There's one for Charles Schultz. There's just um, a variety of styles. So yeah, there's really just a pretty wide range of styles in this. I haven't read, read it yet, and I kind of really want to now. Um, flipping through it, I forgot how uh, beautiful it looked. This seems like something really fun, and I'll read it soon and let you know what I think, but it might be something worth checking out if that's something you're into, I'll say a million times in this video. Then we have the Best of the Rejection Collection. 293 cartoons that were too dumb, too dark, too no or too naughty for The New Yorker. Most of the people who have cartoons in this book are people who are, who do get some of their cartoons printed in the New Yorker, but, you know, a lot more of them get rejected than accepted. And it kind of goes through and does like a little Q&A. Sorry, I'm trying to not lose the page, I want to show you guys. A um, little Q&A where they ask the questions to different cartoonists and kind of goes through them one by one and then goes through some of the strips that got rejected. As well, so it's pretty interesting. Um, it has a lot of really great cartoons in it that just, for whatever reason, didn't get put in the New Yorker. I'd argue that sometimes <laughs> when you read the cartoons in the New Yorker, you're like, "Why did that one get accepted instead of this gold?" But, uh, but yeah, includes my favorite cartoons. I'm in for killing a guy for snoring. Next up is uh, uh, the Encycl New Yorker Encyclopedia of Cartoons. So unlikely includes like every New Yorker cartoon ever, that would be... I don't really consider that likely. Thank you, Train. Yeah, it's a beautiful collection. Kinda hefty, uh, and just fun, and looks nice. Something fun to have on your shelf and just enjoy reading when you got a minute here and there. Next up is... The complete Calvin and Hobbes, and I just popped my wrist picking up. <laughs> Beautiful collection. Little heavy, but ten years worth of uh, strips will do that. 
The comic strip itself doesn't really need an introduction, but it's just a beautiful collection. See how many times I'll say that in this video, too. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. This is a hardcover set, which I believe is pretty pricey still. I think the price went down, then back up. But you can get a paperback version of this in four volumes. I believe it, become, it comes in a box set as well. Um, for a much cheaper price, so if you really are like, I'm a huge Calvin and Hobbes fan, but I don't want to spend an insane amount of money, I want to have it all, then uh, I'd pick up the paperback edition. It might also functionally be easier to read, but I, I enjoy my set. That said, I may have to one day pick up the paperback collection just so I have a set I can go back to and read again and again and again and not worry about doing any damage to my beautiful set beyond what has already been to it. It's my cats. Not this particular but Volume 3 cat. Dug their claws into it, so that was great. Going more into the realm of like comic books rather than newspaper cartoons, we have Volume 1 of Dragon's Riders of Burke. It's a bit of a different style than the CGI uh, films and series, obviously, but uh, it's it's not unattractive um, by any means, and probably need to pick up the rest of these. I got this one for a few bucks a few years ago, because I'm a huge How to Train Your Dragon fan, just anything in that universe. Then we have How to Train Your Dragon, The Serpent's Heir, which is a slightly different style than the Writers of Burke comics. It was fun to look at. I don't remember everything that happened in this. I do remember enjoying it, though. The next one is from a small, independent comics creator out of central Illinois. I believe central Illinois. Anyway, yeah, Illinois. Um, I met him in a comic shop, and I picked up his copy of King Crow. His name is Brett James Freeman, and... God, I've got a tiny bit of staining in it. I don't know how that happened. That bothers me. That is kind of a unique style. And I just felt like picking it up. Because, you know, you get to talking to someone. You're like, ah, what, what's a few bucks? Um, it's been a long time since I've read this. I got this back in 2015, maybe? But I, I remember thinking it was alright. And it's uh, issue one. And as the back says, it is not for kids. Next up is the Fox and the Hound comic book. Which, I read this in the library. Uh, school library when I was a kid. And then... When I grew up, I was like, I, I really need to copy one on eBay. I think it was eBay. It's eBay or Nucadia, or whatever the heck that site is. Anyway, it's just the movie in comic book form. So if you have the movie, you don't really need the comic book, but I <laughs> just enjoyed uh, reading the story in a different format when I was a kid. I also had the... I don't know, Disney used to come out with these books that just told the story of the films and included some drawings that were wasn't quite this style, wasn't quite the film style, but somewhere in between. Gotta find that one and show it to you sometime as well. I really love The Fox and the Hound, it's my favorite Disney movie, followed closely by Brother Bear and, and The Lion King, but I really like stories about friendship, uh, which is maybe part of the reason that I love Lord of the Rings as much as I do, on top of just epic battles and cool characters and amazing music and great cinematography. So there's a lot to love about those films as well, but anyway, there it is. And finally, we just have a few quick, cheap comics that I picked up the comic shop. Some of these actually might be my husband's, I'm not sure. I'm going through it well enough. Uh, the Heckler. The Outsiders. The Human Fly. Godzilla, King of Monsters. I see some of those my husband picked out to have cheap comics to make into little paper flowers for our wedding, and we didn't end up using them. I'm like, I'll throw them out, I want to read them, they're probably, some of them might suck, but I'm going to read them. This one is actually my husband's, but I just wanted to show it because I really enjoy the cover. And that's all I have. That's all of my collection that I can find at this time, anyway, but I just wanted to show some kind of newspaper style co comics and then a little bit of comic book style comics to celebrate the day. And uh, I'll have to do a video soon of specifically my horror comics and my manga, two separate videos. Uh, just because I've got a lot and I don't want the videos to be super long. So, anyway, I hope you enjoyed. I'll put up those other videos soon. 
and uh, have a fantastic National Cartoonist Day and just the month of May in general. See ya.